So let's talk about the structure of visceral spaces now. We identified there's viscera in your head, in your chest, in your abdomen, pelvis. Is there a pattern that we can discern regarding the structure of the visceral spaces? Well, kind of, and I can simplify it a little bit. So let's say we're dealing with the heart. Okay, this is a very sim rough simplification and schematization. So we've got this organ, viscous, right? Organ, viscera. The heart is among the viscera. So we have our heart here, and we can see that it's kind of wrapped in a place or a space. Now, the visceral spaces have at their kind of periphery or their outermost encasement a fibrous layer. So I made the word color match the <laughs> match the bag. So we have a fibrous bag and sometimes that's the inner lining of muscle tissue like in the abdomen. So the deep layers of the muscle wall have a fibrous fascia underneath them. In the heart we have the fibrous pericardium we call it. Or the uh, fibrous um, layer inside your chest. We call it the endothoracic fascia. So it doesn't matter what the word is. There's a fibrous layer, kind of a fibrous fascial layer. And then immediately deep to that fibrous layer is what we call a serous layer. Now that's just another fascia. This time though, it has a specialized coating of cells on it, on the inside of it, that produces a fluid. So we call it a, a serous layer because it produces a serous fluid. So here, this blue layer, right, we're going to call that the first serous layer. It's the wall, right? It's the wall of the space. In Latin, we say parietal, meaning wall whether it be parietal pleura or parietal pericardium or, or parietal peritoneum. All it means is the serous layer that forms the wall with the fibrous layer. And they're adherent to each other and they're supposed to be. It's not a mistake. So they're a nice connection, kind of like the skin and superficial fascia. We've got our fibrous layer and our wall layer of the serous membranes. And then the organ itself, look at the heart. Do you see? Same color, serous layer, and look, it's continuous with it. If you just follow my finger, here I'm on the wall layer, going around the outside of the visceral space. And then look, I kind of double back and I become the skin of the organ. So the skin of the organ is continuous with the wall, right? And yet somehow there's something between them. So we call the skin of the organ the visceral layer of the serous membrane. Right? The visceral layer, so we can talk about the visceral pericardium, the visceral pleura, the visceral peritoneum, but it's just the visceral layer of the organ. It's the skin of the organ. That's how I like to remember it. It's too many words. So skin of the organ, and then the wall layer that are continuous, and then between them do we have what? Perifascia? No. That's in the musculoskeletal system. Here, differential movement is facilitated by the serous fluid that's produced by the visceral membranes, the serous membranes. So both the covering of the organ, the skin of the organ, and the wall layer, which are both one continuous fabric that's sort of involuted on itself, produce a fluid in between themselves, that's like, the, that's like the water on the ice that the hockey puck slides over, right? So the hockey puck, it's not connected to the ice by fascia, it's connected to the ice by fluid adhesion, by, by water. And it's the same with your viscera. They're inside their space, but they're not stuck to the walls. They're movers, they want to move. And so, this is where true gliding happens in your body. I call the perifascial movement shearing, right? Because it's fascia, fascia, 
fascia, fascia, fascia, fascia, all somehow shearing relative to each other in their continuity. Here in the visceral space is the continuity of the organ and its container is, is fluid, just like a glass slip on a slide with a drop of water or oil between it or a hockey puck on the ice. And you know that it's not easy to pull them apart. And similarly, it's like vacuum packed in there. There's no air. I've exaggerated this distance between the visceral serous membrane and the wall layer of the serous membrane. The skin and the wall aren't far apart. The fluid is just a small amount, uh, enough to create connection, gliding, right, and freedom of movement within that space without needing any, you know, anything else. So that's this basic structure of a visceral space. The pattern repeats. Um, and we, so we have our fibrous layer and our two serous layers with a fluid in between them. So I just thought I'd give you another example because I showed you the heart with its, as a, represent, as a symbol or representation of the structure of visceral spaces. And it actually is the case that the heart kind of has its own independent wrap. But I didn't want to give you the idea that all the other organs each were sort of individually wrapped with all those layers, because sometimes they hang out with company. I think of the abdominal organs as a bunch of kittens in a sack playing with each other. I love that image, just like just cuddling up with each other and snuggling inside their sack. So in their sack, they have an outermost fibrous layer, just like with the heart. And then there's the wall layer of the serous membrane. Wall layer, and then that wall layer is continuous with a whole bunch of different organs in the abdomen. We've got our intestines and our, and our liver and our stomach and our spleen, right? And they're all gliding against each other, mediated by the serous fluid. So we can have a singular organ occupying a space patterned in this way, fibrous, serous, serous, with a fluid in between. So your brain, for instance, like the heart, has kind of got its own, own special place. And so you, there's a fibrous wrapping inside your skull. It's actually a double layer in there. And then there's a membrane that is adherent to and lining the cranial cavity. And in between that membrane and the skin of the brain itself is a fluid. Same pattern. All the words are different, but the pattern repeats. So down here, we've got our fibrous layer, our wall layer of serous membrane. Then we have the skin of each organ, and they toss, toss around each other like kittens in a sack with the help of the serous fluid that makes everything slippery and gliding. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.